Hello, and thanks for joining us here at Barnstone Ministries on YouTube channel. And we also wanted to wish everybody on a Merry Christmas. Today being Christmas Eve, we decided to do this little sermonette, this Bible study on uh, the season that we're in, which is the Christmas season, of course. And we want to begin by, if you all could uh, possibly get your Bibles and get ready to turn to some scripture, the first scripture we're going to turn to is Isaiah 6, or Isaiah 9, I apologize. Isaiah 9, verse 6. And Isaiah writes, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now over the years we have seen a kind of downturn of Christians uh, looking upon this holiday as something special, that they have turned to more, uh, whether it be commercialism or uh, consumerism, or unfortunately we've gotten to a legalistic fact that Jesus really wasn't born on December 25th, or the fact that the world has just creeped into the church more than what the church has, you know, went into the world. Whatever that might be, we need to remember that what we're in right now is what we usually call Advent. These are the four Sundays that are prior to Christmas Day. And Advent coming from the Latin term Adventus, which means appearance or coming. And we're talking about the first coming, now we're in the second coming right now, we can't wait to the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus, but we're talking about the birth of Christ, the coming of the Messiah, and those four Sundays, each Sunday has uh, sort of a topic that is guided on those Sundays, and they are hope, joy, love, and peace. Now, I'm not going to, I don't know if they go in any order, or not. I'm not positive about that. But we are going to take those four topics and just do a little recap or a little uh, uh, sermonette on each one. Just keep this brief. So the first one um, I'd like to go to is joy. Before we get to that, I need to back up a little bit. Christmas is about coming together as a unified body and understanding that our Lord and Savior was born. It doesn't matter what day he was born. And we're going to get into that. And we have to also remember that there were certain things that were made in uh, years past. Charles Dickens made a wonderful, uh, uh, a wonderful story. It was called A Christmas Carol. And you have a uh, you have Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, who is just this miser, and he's this greedy, uh, selfish old man, and he's uh, visited by three ghosts. Uh, but the first ghost that comes to him is his partner, Jacob Marley, who is who is deceased, and he comes to him wearing these chains, and 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 he's burdened, and he's he's just wailing, and he's sad and miserable. And I, I want to read something that. Jacob tells Scrooge in that, uh, in the episode where he approaches him. Because, so, Ebenezer, Scrooge, he, he faults by making this comment. He says, Marley, but you were always a good man of business. A good man of business. But listen to what Marley states. Marley states, business Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The deals of my trade but were a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Now, Marley came to Scrooge as a warning. He's stating, look at me and look what I did. I did not live a life that was generous. I did not live a life that was grateful or thankful, or I lived a life that was very selfish. And my business should it have been the business of mankind. 
And it kind of, it's very curious that they would, Charles Dickens would write those certain words because in the book of Galatians, Paul writes the fruits of the Spirit are this, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things, there is no law. You see, this time of season is about looking at others and not looking at yourself. You know, I had a, a very wise individual tell me, joy, Jesus, others, then you. That's joy. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to go into that first Advent Sunday, joy. When you talk about joy, what brings you joy? A lot of people are going to talk about joy being of uh, uh, things that they, whether they enjoy their job, they have their family, and all that is wonderful and good. But Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am in them. In their midst, Jesus being in their midst, when we gather on a service, when we gather in a home and we worship and we praise Jesus Christ, he is in our midst. That is our joy. Now that couldn't have happened if he wasn't born. So we have to remember, all the things that we talk about all started because God himself became a man. Now, the second one I'd like to talk about is love, all right? And there was an old feast that used to happen. Uh, I, I don't know if it happens a lot. I know a lot of maybe Eastern Orthodox still observe it. It was called the Feast of Stephen, okay? When, when Stephen was our first martyr, he was stoned, and you can read about that in Acts chapter 7, verses 54 through 60. And Stephen was stoned because of his faith in Jesus Christ. And when we learn why Stephen was stoned, because of his love, because of his faith, because of his belief in Jesus Christ. And one of the things uh, that you might well remember, there is a, a, a Christmas a, a song that's called uh, Good King of Wenceslas. I hope I didn't pronounce, I hope I pronounced that name correctly because it's a foreign name to me. Anyway, it talks about, uh, it talks about, in a sense, the, the Feast of Stephen. And what happened was all the, uh, all the, the masters of the house or, or the, the lords or the kings on December 26th, they would feed and serve the poor. So uh, some people might have heard it as Boxing Day. You might have heard it like that. And we're not talking about the sport of boxing, okay? We're talking about Boxing Day means that the kings and the lords and the masters of the house would box up food and produce and fruit and they would go and present it to all the poor in the land that they were uh, in charge of or they had, uh, they had around them in their villages or whatever. So in that was the showing of love, was the showing of respect, the showing of gratitude. John 1.14, listen to what God did for us. The word of God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for us. For God so loved the world that he became, that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever shall believe in him shall never perish but have eternal life. That is love. So during this season, during right now, it, it, it shouldn't be just a focus of today or tomorrow. It should be a focus of every day. Christmas, in a sense, should be every day. But for right now, we need to remember that the reason is because a child was born. 
a son was given to us. The next topic is peace. Now, peace is something that we hardly see a lot of today. And I mean, what I mean by that peace is a peace that is beyond all understanding, a peace that only God can give. When Adam and Eve walked in the garden, they walked with God in peace. There was no uprising. There was no worries. There was no concerns or anxiety. It was total peace. But unfortunately, that peace was shattered when sin entered the world. And until the second coming of Christ, the second Adam, we will hardly see. It's going to be a, the only time we can really truly get peace is when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Matthew one twenty three states, Look, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, that's the only peace that we can achieve. Because that achievement is nothing that you can buy, borrow, steal, or trade. That achievement you have to receive. That receiving that Jesus is God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. That when he was born, he became the God man. Hark the Herald Angel Sings is one of them, is, is a wonderful song that talks about peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And the last topic is hope. Now the reason I left this one towards the end is because in the year, which we are in the year of 2020, we've had a lot of tragic events happen. And hope seems so distant. There is so much hopelessness in the world. It's, it doesn't seem like there's an end to it. But I'm here to tell you that hope is possible. And we have to understand that when we use the term hope in a biblical sense, it's an assurance. It's a guarantee. You see, when I make a statement, well, I hope that happens, or I hope there, I hope it's over there, or I, I hope I find it. You see, those are a possibility. Well, like if I lose my keys, I hope they're in my pocket. I hope they're in my jacket. I hope I find it. It's a possibility. It's something that's not assured. However, the hope that the Bible talks about is an assurance. 1 Peter 3.15 But set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. You see, the hope that every Christian should possess is Jesus Christ. That hope is an assurance. That hope is a guarantee. That hope you can never say possibly. That hope is what the world needs today. There isn't a man, woman alive that is going to fix the problems of the world that is here today. There is only one. And his second coming is what we're looking for. Jesus is the only answer to any of the world's problems. Jesus is the only answer to any of the hopelessness that is in this world. Hope is definitely needed. And I'm here to say that Christmas season brings hope. Why? Because unto us a son is born. The only begotten Son of the Father in heaven. Now lastly, it must be acknowledged that God is God. This seems moot to say, but we all too often forget that God is unstoppable. You see, when he decides to do something, it can never be undone. When he speaks, he speaks the absolute truth. It's not relative truth. It's absolute truth. 
when he was born, our salvation was assured as much as it was done at his death and resurrection. All because unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For us here at Barnstone Ministries, we truly pray that you have a blessed Christmas, that you have a wonderful time with any friends and family that you are going to enjoy this time with. And even if you enjoy it alone, remember one thing. You're never alone. Christ is always with you. May you be blessed and may you always glorify him. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you, we pray that your word goes forth in a mighty way. And Father, people's eyes are open to your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is your Son born to us, our salvation the one to glorify and honor. In his name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Again, we pray you have a blessed and merry Christmas.